Hello and welcome to the video. This is another video in my painless answer series and this one is around why it's so complicated to bind your FR Sky radio to an FR Sky receiver. Now this didn't start out as complicated as this. And this is to answer a question specifically from a gentleman called Jay. And Jay was asking why it is so difficult to do the binding process. Uh, see my videos uh, around these individual radios for how the binding works and stuff. But I thought it'd be useful to have a little video. For those of you that haven't lived through the last five years, six years now, with uh, Free Sky on all the changes and why it has ended up as complicated as it is. While we're talking about this, I'll also cover Bert's question as well, who wanted to know about D8, D16. But I think we're going to cover the stuff that you're interested in as well. So let's jump into the slides, because uh, it's actually just easier to kind of show with diagrams and kind of give you this history of the last six years in a quick video. So there are two protocols that you'll hear talked about often when we're not talking about things like LR12 and some of the other stuff for the long range stuff. The regular kind of receivers that we use on a daily basis, you'll either hear them talked about D8 or D16. Now D8 was uh, kind of the first generation of stuff, uh, had telemetry, worked incredibly well. And D8 is still... Uh, widely used in lots and lots of places in the world. In fact, go and check out my review of all the Radio Master uh, receivers that they've just brought brought out that are D8 compatible. And that's because an, uh, it's been harder and harder to get D8. And lots of pilots love D8. It works fantastically well. However, it changed, and we'll come on to this in a minute, um, quite a few years ago now. D8 was one of those things that became illegal to use in the EU. And also, FreeSky was adding more functionality and everything in. And we got the X series of receivers that ran the D16 protocol. Now, D16 is what I use here all the time. But the problem is, and the reason why it gets so complicated, is that D16 has lots and lots of flavors. So uh, rather than D16 just being one flavor of ice cream, there's a raspberry ripple, a chocolate, a vanilla, a strawberry, uh, a caramel version of it and your radio has to talk exactly the same flavor uh, to be able to talk to the receiver and that is where a lot of the complication comes in there's also a new protocol that was released a year or two ago now that's the new access receiver things like the archer receivers talk that latest radios from free sky will talk d16 or ACCST is actually what it's called. So I'll call. I'll, I'll talk about ACCST and D16 in the same breath. Uh, but what I really mean is the same thing. And apologies for kind of changing my terminology. I'll try not to do it. So you had D8, you had ACCST D16 mode, and you had access as well. So we've already got three versions before we get into the weeds. But let's get into those weeds and I'll explain why we've ended up with so many different flavors of ice cream. So back in the very early days, it was easy. There was one version of everything and it was ACCST based and your radio and receiver were pretty much guaranteed to be running the same flavor. So they would talk to each other and everything was tickety boo. However, when some of the EU regulations changed, FR Sky was forced to create two different versions of ACCST. And you will hear them referred to as lots of different names. But on the package, you'll see that uh, receivers that have the EU firmware flashed on them will be marked as LBT. And that stands for Listen Before Talk. And this was part of the regulations that came in here in the EU, which says that electronic equipment like the radios that we're using here in the hobby has to listen before they transmit to make sure they're not transmitting over someone else's broadcast. And that meant that we ended up with two flavors. We had the LBT and the FCC. Now that started to cause confusion in its own right. It was easier in one way in that the EU kit should have always had an EU sticker on it and you could actually change the internal radio. You could flash it on your Tyrannus or your QX7 or whatever. You could change it with the flavor that you wanted. 
Although it did appear that later on that did change. If you got an EU radio, it was almost impossible to flash it to the international version. But again, you had to make sure that if the radio was talking the EU or the LBT version, that the receiver was too. And so long as you both had the same version on your receiver and your radio, you were still good. Then it got a little bit more complicated. Then AWCST version 2 came out, again in two flavours, both LBT and FCC, to comply with the regulations. Now, initially, version 2 of AWCST had a lot of uh, protection built in and proprietary stuff that lots of pilots were very unhappy with. And that meant that now not only did you have to try and figure out whether or not your radio and receivers were LBT, but whether or not they were AS AWCST version 1, which is what the original was called, or AWCST version 2. Now, very quickly, FR Sky responded to the criticism of AWCST v2 and brought out AWCST version 2.1 that actually removed a lot of that protection and allowed it to work with third party devices. But now it means that potentially your radio can be on any four of these and your receiver can too. The good news is, is that most kit is going to be talking AWCST version 1 by default. And unless you specify it and buy stuff internationally, you're probably going to get the FCC, i.e. the non-EU version on the kit that you've got. And again, it's no big deal. It's easy to flash a receiver onto the right version of the protocol or the flavor, as I was calling it before, so that it talks to your radio. But then it got slightly more complicated because then not only did we have those four flavors we had to worry about, then FreeSky brought out Access 2, which is their brand new latest and greatest technology, runs on the Archer receivers and has some additional advantages over AWCST, both version 1 and version 2. So if you buy an Archer receiver with the Access protocol on it, if your radio is an AWCST version 1 radio and doesn't know how to talk to access then it isn't going to work so while free sky didn't set out to make this incredibly complicated that's kind of where we've ended up this isn't unusual for a manufacturer to bring out improved different versions of the protocol look at what people like spectrum did with dsm dsm2 dsmx uh, they're always upgrading it but what FreeSky failed to do that a lot of those other manufacturers did was make sure that their radios could continue to talk multiple protocols. So that if you had lots of different versions and lots of different receivers with different versions of AWCST on or access, it would all work. Now, the new radios will talk AWCST and access, but typically won't talk that older D8 protocol. But what pilots really want is a radio that can talk to everything. And unfortunately, FreeSky have never bothered to try and give us that. It's been down to other people to actually produce radios that will talk to all of their receivers. And that's why these multi-protocol modules from people like Radio Master have become so incredibly popular. It doesn't matter on my receiver what I'm running. It could be a AWCST version 1, it could be EU, it could be non-EU, it could be AWCST version 2 with EU or non-EU. Uh, the radio kind of doesn't care. But also this radio will bind to Spectrum receivers, Fataba receivers, and many, many, many others. So this, no matter what receiver you've got, with the exception of access, because it doesn't support that right now, because that's a proprietary protocol that has a lot of that protection in that AWCST version 2 had when it originally shipped. <gasps> Deep breath. Then you can talk to pretty much anything with one of these. And this is why I've started to use these an awful lot more than the free sky radio stuff. So how do you know what your radio is actually running? If you don't have one of these multi protocol radios where you can just try each variant until you find the right one that binds to your receiver, how do you know what's on your radio? Well, again, unfortunately, free sky haven't made that in very easy either. If you're lucky, there may be an, uh, an EU sticker on the back somewhere, uh, which will tell you that it's EU. Uh, if it's a recent radio, there's a very good chance it'll be AWCST 
and it'll also run access older radios like this original qx7 which i've had for probably five years now maybe four or five years also we'll talk awcst uh, it'll talk uh, d8 d16 it'll talk awcst version one but only one flavor so you have to make sure you know which flavor it is and then you get the receiver that talks the same flavor good news is is that you can flash receivers quite easily i've got loads of videos so that you can make sure that if this is an eulbt radio and you accidentally get hold of a receiver that's international version you can flash it with the right version to match the radio again links below that kind of go through all that process but for me that's far too complicated free sky really drop the ball in my humble opinion they could have made it so that their radios could talk to all the protocols and that it could figure out automatically which protocol it needed to talk and when it went to, to the binding sequence actually try them all in order and find the right one and then bind to the receiver and you were good if you're not sure most things, unless you're buying them in the EU, uh, most things bought in the EU from EU resellers are going to have the EU sticker on them and they'll all be EU and they'll probably be AWCST version 1 unless they're Archer receivers in which case they'll probably have access on there too. If you're buying it internationally, most stuff is going to be shipping with AWCST version 1 international uh, software on it so that's probably what's going to be on your machine as well it'd have been lovely if they'd give us a way that you could actually look somewhere on the radio to find what it works unfortunately it doesn't so my advice would be once you've figured out what your radio is running AWCST version 1 version 2 international non-international uh, I would probably write it and a little sticker on the inside of your JR Bay and then if you're ever doing something later on or something doesn't bind you can get hold of that firmware flash it onto the receiver and get it to work so hopefully for those of you that were interested that kind of explains some of the history and the background it is complicated it is far more complicated than it needs to be but that is why you have seen a huge move away from free sky radios to stuff like this Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.